At the moment, the only effective tool against this pandemic is to change some of our practices, and we need to do that. Breaking news this evening, Governor Jay Inslee is making big changes to the way bars and restaurants will be run in an effort to slow the spread of the coronavirus. He says these changes are necessary to help flatten the curve. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here for Crimson News at 5. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Henry. And let's get straight to that breaking news. Governor Inslee making three big decisions today. First, new rules set for businesses, including restaurants, bars and gyms. Second, an extension to the mask mandate and adding further rules. And and third, the governor is extending the statewide moratorium on evictions. Let's start with the new rules for Washington businesses, starting with restaurants and bars. Indoor dining now limited to household members. That means you can only sit with people from your household if you sit inside. Next, new alcohol sale rules. Alcohol sales must now end at 10 p.m. and bar service now only allowed outdoors. For counties in phase three, table sizes now reduced to five people and total occupancy is down to 50%. All right, next, gyms and fitness centers. For counties in phase two, like Spokane County, indoor fitness services are limited to five people. And for counties in phase three, total occupancy is now limited to 25% capacity. Now I want to move on to the second big announcement about masks. Today, the governor, along with Secretary of Health John Wiesman, they added more rules to the statewide mask mandate. You now have to wear masks in any common place. That includes elevators, hallways, university housing, hotels, and nursing homes. Now this is an extension to the previous order. This expanded mandate goes into effect on Saturday. The governor says this is necessary to help reduce the spread of the virus. Now, this situation has been described by some of our uh, experts as, as being sort of where Florida was several weeks ago. And as we know, Florida now has, you know, many hospitals with no more ICU capacity. And we are in a position that possibly could result in a Florida-like condition if we do not act. Secretary Wiesman added that more people in Spokane are now wearing masks. He said 90% of people in the county are now wearing them, and that went up from 10 to 15% just a few weeks ago. And finally, the last announcement is for renters and landlords. The statewide moratorium on uh, evictions is now extended to October 15th. That was set to expire previously in August. We know there are a lot of changes happening right now and they're happening quickly. So for more information, just text the word gather to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you the very latest information. Whitney. Well, Mark, also breaking tonight, the Panhandle Health District has voted in favor of a mask mandate. This is for Kootenai County and it did pass at a four to two vote. Our Taylor Vido has been tracking this all day. He'll have more coming up here in just a few minutes. Also breaking this evening, WSU Pullman has announced just now all fall 2020 classes will be held remotely. The statement from University President Kirk Schultz mentioned other WSU campuses will announce their plans shortly. As of today, fall sports practices though will take place as planned. WSU is getting ready to hold a COVID-19 town hall meeting tomorrow. That's at 1 p.m. You can find more information on that. Just go to creme.com. Mark delayed again. The teen charged with killing a fellow student and injuring three more at Freeman High School back in 2017 has been rescheduled for June of next year. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley was in the court today when the judge made that decision. She explains how the response to coronavirus is factoring in. It's been nearly three years since the shooting at Freeman High School. The Freeman community wants closure, but since then the criminal trial has been delayed several times. Now, while the judge today agreed to set the new trial date for June 1st next year, he doesn't know how realistic that is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't know how many times I've said it, but I wanted this case to get going and we needed to get this case tried and completed for everyone's sake. And here comes COVID, which has changed the circumstance for everyone. Court records document the Freeman High School shooter admitting to the shooting upon his arrest in September 2017. His trial was scheduled for October this year, but it's pushed back again because of COVID-19 and to give defense attorneys more time to prepare. We just don't know how this is going to play out. We thought this was going to be done maybe in July, and now uh, at, at least it feels like we're going to be through the end of the year with many of these restrictions that we're dealing with, with social distancing and masks and such. 
Superior Court Judge Michael Price says Spokane County held a criminal jury trial a few weeks ago. It's the first court in Washington state to do so since the stay-at-home order went into effect. He says it was not a complex case, but the court still faced tremendous obstacles because of current restrictions. Jurors who very much did not want to be here and uh, struggled with the idea that they were called to jury service in the middle of a pandemic. He is presiding on a murder trial next week. The plan is to use two courtrooms to conduct the trial one for jurors and one for the judge and attorneys, in order to keep everyone six feet apart. Judge Price hopes the trial next week will spotlight any necessary changes to this plan ahead of the Freeman shooter's trial. I want to apologize profusely to those who have been waiting for this trial date to go forward. It would have been over, tried and done had COVID not raised its head, in my opinion. And I wouldn't be even remotely considering a continuance. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. As Amanda mentioned, the school shooting happened nearly three years ago. By the time the trial starts, nearly four years will have passed. So how do we get to this point? Here's a look back. September 13, 2017, investigators say the 15-year-old student boards a bus with two guns concealed in a large athletic-style duffel bag, an AR-15-style rifle, and a pistol. Once inside Freeman High School, he begins shooting, killing fellow student 15-year-old Sam Strahan and wounding three others. School janitor Joe Bowen ordered the shooter to the ground and held him there until deputies arrested him. Prosecutors announced they planned to charge him as an adult. One count of premeditated murder, three counts of attempted first-degree murder, and 51 counts of second-degree assault for endangering other students during the shooting. July 23, 2019, after a series of delays, Superior Court Judge Michael Price rules the shooter, now 17, will be tried as an adult. The ruling means he could face life in prison. The following month in August, the shooter pleaded not guilty to the charges. A judge sets his bond at $1 million. Then in September, Judge Price agrees to delay the trial for a full year. The reason? The shooter's legal representation changed from a private attorney to a public defender, and his new lawyer needed time to get familiar with the case. November 2019, the teen's new legal team filed a motion asking Judge Price to recuse himself from overseeing the case, arguing he'd be unable to be impartial. The court denies the motion. Then today, three months before the trial was set to begin, it was pushed back again. The trial is now set for June of 2021, nearly four years after the school shooting. The shooter will be 19 years old. And we will certainly be following this case closely, and we know the community will as well. Freeman High School's graduation, by the way, for the class of 2020, falls just 11 days after the start of the trial, which again is now set for June 12th of 2021. Whitney. Well, parts of central Washington are under a red flag warning tonight and extending into tomorrow. We're checking in with Tom Sherry now, and of course, we're getting a little bit of a cool down, but honestly, with conditions as dry and warm as it has been, it's not a whole lot of a break, is it, Tom? Well, no, uh, as a matter of fact, here's what we're talking about, Whitney. It looks like we're going to be seeing this red flag warning continuing uh, for a while. Uh, uh, tonight until 8 o'clock, and then it's also going to go in effect tomorrow again from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's because we're seeing gusty winds and still the hot temperatures out in central Washington. We've enjoyed a bit of a cool down back here in, say, uh, extreme eastern Washington and into northern Idaho with the daytime highs uh, only climbing into the 80s today. But we did see temperatures in the 90s in central Washington. We'll see temperatures in the 90s again. There you see it right there, 84 the current temperature, uh, and we will look for wind gusts here around the 20 to 25 mile per hour range. So again, red flag warning in effect till 8 o'clock tonight and again between 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. in areas of central Washington. So here's a look at your day planner forecast. We'll look for mostly clear skies at 55 degrees, 83 the expected high for Friday. Uh, we'll start out with sunshine and then see cloud cover or partly cloudy skies uh, by the afternoon. By the way, I'm out here at the Outdoor Weather Center. We're doing Tom's barbecue forecast. We're doing tri-tip tonight. We'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. Back to you.
All right, sounds good, Tom. Thanks very much. And we want to get back to our breaking news now. The Panhandle Health District voting in favor of a mask mandate here for Kootenai County, which would require every person in the county to wear a mask or a face covering if they are in public where they cannot maintain that six feet of social distance. Our Taylor Vito has been tracking this developing situation throughout the day. He's joining us now with the latest. <laughs> From the moment it passed, some erupted. It's not going to happen! It's not going to happen! I don't give a This is wrong! By law, face masks must now be worn in Kootenai County when in public and not able to social distance. The Panhandle Health District Board passed the mandate Thursday afternoon, and not long after, a crowd continued to rally outside the county building where the meeting was being held. The meeting began with public comment. Most who spoke opposed the mandate or argued that masks were ineffective. Now bear in mind, all that exhaust is not filtered. We'll get Who's going to enforce this? Those in favor of a mask mandate were in the minority. I have been yelled at today. I have been out in the hallway where there's all sorts of things going on. Not everyone on both sides of the issue was able to speak. That upset this woman who confronted board members and was escorted outside. This is totally unfair. Some board members then debated masks, their effectiveness, and if a mandate was needed. Some urged the board to listen to North Idaho's medical community and Kootenai Health. Others on the board, including a doctor, drew scrutiny to COVID-19 stats, tests, and false positives. Summary, masks do not work to prevent viral spread. It's been clearly shown in CDC studies. Again, the mandate applies only to Kootenai County. A spokesman with the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says that, yes, by state law, the mask mandate is legal. Violating the mandate would be a misdemeanor. However, the Sheriff's Office made it clear enforcing mask violations would be low on the department's list of priorities. The department wouldn't enforce the mandate unless it was absolutely necessary. In Coeur d'Alene, Taylor Vito, Crentu News.